Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Jimmy Dore Show. I want to just show you now, you know that everybody in the mainstream news media and even some lefty news shows have their hair on fire because 13 Twitter trolls completely threw the election. I didn't know. Did you know that? Five billion dollars in free advertising to Donald Trump can't match 13 Twitter trolls who don't even know the language. Uh, and let's remember how powerful they were. It took a, a CBS News host. To, this is John Podesta, Hillary Clinton's campaign manager. CBS News host totally watched this. Some impact. But it does beg the question, how is it that these Russian operatives knew to focus on purple states like Michigan and Wisconsin and your campaign didn't? Bam. OK, so now we know. <laughs> But I want to, what I really want to talk to you today about because that's the that's that's how it's stupid it is to blame the election on thirteen Twitter trolls. This is James Risen. He was uh, prosecuted by the uh, uh, the United States for uh, revealing secrets, secrets, uh, uh, criminal secrets that the government was doing. So he's a he's a great reporter, and he wrote this. He wrote this: Is Donald Trump a traitor? And it's in the Intercept, which is uh, bogus that he wrote that and it's stupid that he used that headline. In fact, he was told so by Glenn Greenwald. They had an they had an hour long debate over stuff like this. James Risen and Glenn Greenwald since they both work for the Intercept. And I'm just going to show you a little bit of it, why it's not treason and why I don't think debating stuff like this is very helpful. So here's Glenn Greenwald telling you why it's not treason. Jim wrote, quote, if a presidential candidate or his lieutenant secretly work with a foreign government that is a longtime adversary of the United States to manipulate and then win a presidential election, that is almost a textbook definition of treason. That is that that's what James Risen wrote. So and here we go. Not just wrong, but dangerously wrong, that that statement um, and that idea that it's almost a textbook definition of treason. Um, it's completely not a textbook definition of treason. Um, and it's extremely important to be careful about what treason does and doesn't mean. And there was a fantastic article just from two days ago by Stephen Vladek, who's a professor of law at the University of Texas, who on NBC's website wrote a really great article about why it's so dangerous to throw the word treason around recklessly in cases where it clearly doesn't apply. And he meant it in two senses. One, Trump had just said that maybe the Democrats were traitors for not standing and clapping for all of the great things that are happening to the United States. And then the other one is that Trump might be a traitor for colluding with the Russians. And what uh, Pro Professor Vladek said, and he's a really ardent opponent of Trump, is he examined the history of treason in the United States. And he said, quote, the mere existence of this question of whether Trump is a traitor underscores the need for a long overdue moratorium on the blithe characterization of things as treason. And for all of us to be far more careful when using that term to describe conduct that we believe is some combination of reprehensible criminal and perhaps even impeachable. As Jim acknowledges in the article, um, the Constitution defines treason. It's not a vague uh, crime. It's one of the most specific crimes. And the Constitution went out of its way to define what treason is. It doesn't define what murder is. It doesn't define rape or pedophilia. But it does define treason. And it says treason against the United States shall consist only in levying war against them, or in adhering to their enemies, giving them aid and comfort. And what Professor Vladek said is that, contrary to Jim's suggestion in the article, that, well, it's kind of a vague term, so we don't really know if collusion would fit into it. It's actually not vague at all. And he cited a federal co appeals court in 1986 who explained, quote, the reason for the restrictive definition of treason is apparent from the historical backdrop of the treason cause. The framers of the Constitution were reluctant to facilitate such prosecutions because they were well aware of abuses and they themselves were traitors in the eyes of England. As a result, treason is, in some respects, the most specific crime in our legal system and certainly among the hardest to prove. And then he went on to apply it to this question of whether Trump could be a traitor if he colluded with Russia. And what Vladek says is, quote, because of this history, a lot of things that might seem or feel like treason to casual observers do not, in fact, come close. In this context, enemies, for example, must be countries against which Congress has formally declared war or otherwise authorized the use of force. So contemporary Russia is out. 
whatever role it might have played in the 2016 election, even during the height of the Cold War, Vladek writes, when Julius and Ethel Rosenberg were tried, convicted, and executed for conveying nuclear secrets to the Soviet Union, the charge against them was espionage, not treason. And that's because we weren't at war with the Soviet Union. And so he concludes, by those metrics, it should be obvious why it is not treason to either refuse to applaud the president or to collude with Russia to influence the outcome of a presidential election. To be sure, the latter one is worse, but Treason is a crime indicating the clear support of our enemies during wartime, period. Yeah, and I- That's it. So when that guy wrote that article, he's, a, he's an award-winning journalist, James Rice, and he knows better. Uh, you would think he knows better, and he just had it explained to him by Glenn Greenwald. He just had it explained to him. So whenever you see someone throw the treason term around, remember, they're using it recklessly. Just like every almost all commentary about this Russia collusion and Trump is completely reckless, hyperbolic and dangerous. Why? Because a it's used being used to silence the left like it's always been. B, they're attacking Trump from the right because he has to show he's not a traitor. So he has to bomb somebody. That's what's happening. So now they're ratcheting up tensions with a cold war, with a a nuclear power. So now Trump, Trump has to be more muscular in his response to Russia and Syria or else he's a traitor. These are horrible, horrible things. And that's when you start throwing that word around recklessly the way James Risen is. He just there's no doubt in the world that it's not treason. He just laid it out for you in three different ways. Now, the reason why I don't like to do debates like this is because of the way Jim Risen responds. I'm going to show you that when we come back. And I'm going to show you the problem with all these kind of debates, which is the same debate problem Kyle had with Cenk Uger. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back to the Jimmy Dore Show. Where we left you was Glenn Greenwald just laid it out to James Risen, who wrote an article saying, did Trump commit treason? He laid it out that it couldn't possibly have committed treason because you have to be against an enemy. We're, We're not at war with Russia. That's and plus for many other reasons. Now, Glenn has one more ironic fact he wants to give to James Risen, and here it is. I, like th- there's an irony to this, which is that when I first started writing about politics in twenty in twenty two thousand five and two thousand and six, one of the main reasons that I stopped practicing on started writing about politics is because I was so disturbed about the political climate in the United States. And one of the things I was most concerned about was that at the time, journalists who were revealing secrets about the war on terror were routinely being accused of being traitors. James Risen was one of those journalists revealing secrets. Okay. And even prosecution was commonly advocated for them. That was true of Jim and Eric Lickbile's story exposing surveillance programs, the New York Times story exposing Swift, Dana Priest's story exposing black sites. And the argument at the time was, these journalists are giving aid and comfort to our enemies, Al-Qaeda, by showing them how we're tracking their finances, how we're spying on their calls, how we're detaining them. And I found that argument so revolting and repellent for the reasons I just said. The irony, though, is in that that case, they actually had a better argument for these reporters having committed treason because we really were at war with al-Qaeda. There really was a congressional declaration um, authorizing the use of force, unlike in the case of Russia, where we're not at war with Russia. President Obama called them our partner. Um, And so I think to even insinuate that this is a case of treason is extremely dangerous and and unwise. Okay, so now you just saw him break it down twice why it's bad to to call this treason. And so this is why these debates aren't helpful. Here's how he responds to that. You think he would say, you're right, I'm wrong, and I'm sorry I did that, and if I could retract it, I would. Let's see what he does say. Not at war with Russia. President Obama called them our partner. Um, And so I think to even insinuate that this is a case of treason is extremely dangerous and, and unwise. All right, Glenn, let's get, let's get Jim. Make, go, yeah, go ahead, Jim. I, go yeah. ahead, Jim. This, what you've uh, just expressed uh, leads me back to what I have come to think about the way you write about the Trump and Russia story. Uh, I don't know if you, uh, there was a New York Magazine story about you and reading a lot of your writings. You... Many times what you do is you criticize the um, political or journalistic points of view 
of either the writer or a politician who's talking about Trump and Russia uh, fairly and, and often validly, but you don't deal with the underlying issue of the substance of the Trump and Russia case. For instance, just now, you made a valid, a valid criticism of the use of uh, the word treason. Okay, I'm going to stop it there because he's not responding to what Glenn said at all. He's just changing the subject to talk about something else. And that's how these things always go. He just goes, oh, and then in, in the middle, he says, you just made a valid criticism. Really? You didn't acknowledge it. You didn't go, that's a great point, ben, Glenn, and I, you're right, and let's, so let's move on to another point. That's not what he did. He didn't address it at all. He moved on to another point, and then he kind of sideways addresses it. That's what these, that's why these things aren't helpful. So that, that's what, here, here we, so by the way, he just said that, he just said that, um, uh, I, I, you made a, you, you made a valid criticism, but then he, let's see what else he says. Uh, but you didn't deal with the underlying issue of, do you believe that the Russians intervened in the 2016 election? And what so no matter what you say, they just moved the goalposts. He, no, he, we're talking about this and you're going, yeah, but you just don't, what the, we're talking about this and he just moved the goalposts. So he just changes it, and now here. So so now watch this. This is also very interesting. So that's why these things aren't helpful. That's why I watched Kyle debate Jenk Uger over this exact uh, topic. It went almost exactly the same, and they never concede. Like that's right. All right. So that point check. Let's move on. They didn't. But watch what happens here. Passage of your article saying that you thought that if this case could be proven, this is a textbook definition yeah, of treason. Yeah, and I still believe you that. then. Uh, <laughs> facts be damned i believe it F facts be damned everything you just said everything i just said in that first segment forget about out the window he just so that's why these things aren't helpful so no matter how many facts you throw in his face a he's not going to acknowledge he didn't acknowledge it he goes well it's valid criticism as you didn't acknowledge everything he said he couldn't have laid the case out any better. He took almost five full minutes to read you definitions of why it's not treason, why it can't be. And then he goes, well, it's a valid criticism. And then he just, here, I'll play it for you again. Passage of your article saying that you thought that if this case could be proven, this is a textbook definition yeah, of treason. Yeah, and I still believe you that. Then, <laughs> so that's, that, that's why this is not, not worth not worthwhile. I'm here with Ron Placone. Ron? Yeah, well, this is sort of a thing. You mentioned how, like, well, now the left is attacking Trump from the right. They're also attacking parts of the left from the right, too. Yes. Like, whenever you ask critical questions about what's going on uh, in Russiagate and how there's some cyclical effects that are very, very not okay, uh, you're called a Trump sympathizer or a Putin puppet. It, oh. That's the equivalent of, well, you're not with us, you're with the terrorists. That's you're the with uh, us or, or, or against us. Or when you're us. called not a, not a patriot. Like, aren't you going to be a patriot? Well, no, I'm asking critical questions. Right. That's that's what I'm doing. Right. That's so. So that's why I'm not big on these these kind of debates. Um, you just saw what happened. Glenn could not have been any crystal clearer about what happened. And J and Jeremy Scahill sitting there and uh, another great. These, by the way, these are all three great journalists. So I'm not. But uh, and Jeremy Scahill is is doing as good a job as he can. I don't think I would do a better job. But the problem is, I think you need a scorekeeper. So Jeremy Casey's go, wait a minute, we're talking about your use of the word treason, and I think we have to concede the Glenn's point on this, right? They didn't do that. There's no scorekeeper, which is what was also missing in Kyle Kalinske's debate. There's no scorekeepers to go, okay, now we can move on. So then it just gets all bungled. We'll be back with more of this in just one minute. So I'm going to show you now, finally, I don't know, 14 or 15 minutes into this conversation, James Risen actually decides to answer the question or answer the or talk to the topic, which is treason. And should and, and is it wrong for him to use treason in this conversation? Which it is. It's already been laid out that it is. And so now now again, this is now watch what he comes back with. This is unbelievable almost. It's a question. I didn't say I didn't give an answer. I said that it's a question whether he's a traitor. I didn't say yes, he is a traitor. I said, if you, I'm just asking questions. I'm like, hey, Bernie, did you did you have uh, did you have Russian Twitter bots helping your campaign? I'm just asking. I'm just asking. Did uh, did Jill Stein? Did you sit at a table with? Put. I'm just asking. 
<laughs> you can't just say I'm asking if he committed treason in the headline of an article. I'm just asking. What the? That's like if someone said that about you. Hey, how about if I put a headline in the New York Times? Did James Risen is he is he a traitor? So that's okay. So that's just mind blowing. And here, here it goes. There's more. There's more to this. Look at the issues of the. If you are a presidential candidate, you you collaborate with a foreign government an adversary, granted it's not an enemy of the United States, and under the legal definition of treason, that may be one reason why it will never be considered treason. It might never be considered treason because, you know, it's not. That might that might be one of the reasons that they don't consider it treason is because it's not. That's what he just said. That might be one of the reasons they don't consider it is because it literally isn't treason. But watch this. Gets worse. As you said, as you pointed out, but the idea that if you're a presidential candidate and you well, get elected what, 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 by no, colluding other, with a, an adversary of the United States, I think most Americans would think in the common usage of that term that that would be treason. First of all, there's two point problems here. The first problem is everybody colludes with everybody to get dirt on their Hillary Clinton colluded with a foreign spy from England who colluded with people inside the Kremlin to get dirt on Donald Trump. That happened. The exact thing they're accusing him of, they did it. The second problem is it's commonly used, commonly misused. So here, Glenn gets to that. Now, I'm not okay, saying that but, Donald but Trump know, is but, a traitor. But, but th there is no definition of treason or traitor besides the legal definition. Yeah, well, I think, I think, is, that's, and, I think and, you're and, wrong and, about and, that. I think... <laughs> No, there's another no, he's not. Ryan, I don't know if you know, there's another <laughs> definition for treason outside the legal definition. And it's exclusively in this guy's article, apparently. And, I yeah. mean, that's the thing. He just kind of read, he set his own boundary yeah. for terms in the headline. You can't do that. that. Now, he could have written an article, and the title of that article should have been, we need to redefine treason for the modern age. Right. That's or something what, like that. And, and that would have been like, okay, that's an interesting po point of view. Let's see what, and then use this as an example, gone through his point of view on it. That's a fine article to write, but um, that probably wouldn't get uh, MSNBC <laughs> coverage or anything like that. That's probably right. Mm -hmm. So let's listen and watch the rest of this. It's a really dangerous standard. No, I think I think that, that I think you're wrong. Me, about, I think there's I think a common a really usage and a legal usage. I think it's a really dangerous standard. I said in my piece, if you, you recall, to say that that okay, well, maybe treason and 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 being a traitor doesn't apply in the legal sense, but a lot of Americans okay. think that it would apply in a colloquial sense. You know what? I can guarantee you, and I'm sure there's polling to support this, in fact, that in 2006 and in 2007, a lot of Americans believed that the New York Times was yeah, guilty of treason to put me for in jail. exposing secrets. And he's just very, he's just, yeah, a lot of people wanted to call me a traitor. And, that, that, and he's just, yep, a lot of people want to put me in jail. Yeah, that's why it's horrible, Tim! People are going to go to jail over it, Jim. That's that's why it's horrible. Yeah. Um, that were designed to help Al Qaeda. Yes. Um, learn about the U.S. And so I think it's incredibly dangerous, especially for a journalist who writes about classified programs, right. to say, hey, when we're talking about treason and, tra and being a traitor, let's not use this careful constitutional definition. Let's just be colloquial about okay. it and take a poll and figure out whether or not people kind of like the behavior. And if they don't like it, let's just maybe okay. suggest someone's. If that's exactly why I think it's so okay. dangerous. And hey, why we can disagree on that point. What the f are you disagreeing about? Well, I, I think you can't disagree about that. There's no so he again he just you're like what you said he just makes up his own universe he makes up his own language his own pair his his own uh, goalposts he makes up his own parameters he makes up his own definitions of words and terms and then goes well I just disagree with the actual definition Ron well Glenn Greenwald's being a bit of a stickler by assuming that journalists should be careful with the language they yes! use yes that's. <laughs> And he just and then and so that's how the that's why I'm just saying because people keep telling me you should debate people you should debate people this is how it goes and you can be a slick debater he's being kind of a slick debater where he's again he's not he's not I don't think he's being an honest debater here I think he's doing everything he can to try to cover his ass and and cover his point of view. And he's complete. It's I don't. Well, the reason why I'm showing you this is because I think it's undeniable what's happening here. 
Uh, and it's only undeniable, but, but it's not deniable to him because he, he apparently could do any kind of mental gymnastics required to make his position correct, which he's doing right here, left and effing right. Left and effing. And so that's why I don't go on. I, people, I, I'm not that I won't debate someone or I don't go on, I go on panels all the time. But I'm just saying people like, well, I, I, you know, uh, like when I, I keep going back to when Kyle debated Jenk Uger. That was so unsatisfying. It's, it's just as unsatisfying as this is. So un- for the same exact reasons, because direct questions never get answered. They can always talk about something else. They go, I agree with you, but it's not, but you don't. And there needs to be a scorekeeper. I wish that Jeremy Scale was like, wait a minute, you're wrong on tre- tre- treason. We all have to agree. You're wrong, James, on that 100%. That needs to happen, and it's not happening. And if that doesn't happen, then these conversations aren't as useful as they could be. Well, one of the things in... Oh, sorry. That's, I'm sorry, Ron. I wish we had more time. We're out of time. Uh, thanks for watching the Jimmy Dore Show. It's a f- uh, fun thing that I like to do here with my friend Ron. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on our next episode. Treason.